All right, people. <clears throat> we back, man. Couple weeks off. Been chilling, relaxing, having a good time, and working in my garden, low key, man. That's one of my things I like to do when I'm home, man. I, uh, I get out there in the yard, me and a wife, man, and get getting that good garden, bro. But uh, and we back. We out here on Gville, man. And um, I don't know if you guys can see behind me. Bunch of luscious eel grass, grass everywhere on this place, man. This place has been fishing really good. I'm excited to be here. I don't know a lot about Gunnersville, other than it puts out some phenomenal bags of fish. I've been here a couple of times, um, but there's just so much you can do here on this lake, man. There's gonna be fish out on ledges, deeper water, you know, 15 to 20, 25. Um, there's gonna be fish in this grass. I think the majority of the fish that will be caught this week, the checks, are gonna come out of the grass. I could be wrong, but that's my that's my gut feeling. And so um, starting off here in the grass, looking for a little bit of a shad spawn. I've already caught a couple small ones on a frog, missed one nice one. I mean, this place is alive and well, man. So it's gonna be one of them weeks where um, you're gonna to have to catch them. You know, I think it's gonna be a lot like Lake Murray. Lake Murray was phenomenal. I mean, it put out crazy weights and I think it's gonna take 16 pounds a day to make the cut here probably. Somewhere in there, 15 to 17. 17 on the super high end, but you know, it could happen. But this place is freaking got them, man. So I'm excited, I'm happy to be out here. Um, you know, I'm happy to be on a, on, a, on a great fishery. You know what I mean? And uh, hopefully we can just piece something together, man. It's time to turn this thing around, man. And, 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 now, is, and now is the time to do it. Gunnersville is the place. A lot of biggins in here, man. So keep poking around, man. You guys will be updated, catch by catch, and we'll check in periodically, just let you guys kind of know what's going on. We've got two days of practice. Today's the super long day. Tomorrow we got to be off the water at 6. So I know that still sounds like a long day, but but for us, when you're trying to figure something out, there's still a lot of time where you can be casting and not putting it on the trailer. So that's what we own. Y'all stay tuned. I'm going to catch a big in practice watch. And a few bigs in the dirt. Nice. Oh, good. I don't even know if he's a 112. Let's see, a 112 is like a one in a one and three quarter, right? It is. Yes. Yeah, one. It's four ounces. It's exactly what it is. One and three quarter. So you got 175 on here. Two powder. There you go. Two pounder. Not exactly what we're looking for, but we'll take it. First scoreable bite of the day. Flipping some blown in eelgrass mats. Um, nothing special, you know, but I'm in this goose pond area right here. Show them the pan over there and show them the marina right there. You guys are anything about you're very familiar with this area and every tournament y'all mark my words on this every tournament somebody top tens if not wins it in this vicinity so it's just an area that you got to spend some time in and um, and see if you can get some bites you know because they live here man some big ones I had a I had a top 10 finish I've only ever fished Gunnersville one other time it was in 2015 a long time ago uh, but I caught them all here in this goose pond area. Really big ones that week. Um, it was in March, and uh, it was just a great week. But they just consistently get caught 
in this vicinity. I don't know why, but they live around here. Maybe I need to be focusing on these holes in here and not the actual mats themselves. Second time, that's crazy. Two pounder. That's crazy. <laughs> there you go. <coughs> Maybe two and a quarter. But literally. Sight fish. So you might be able to sight fish them, I don't know. That was weird. Was he cruising? He was, and then I saw him, and then he kind of like put brakes on, you know? on bed. I saw him over there. Probably two and a quarter. And then uh I threw in there and I was reeling it out. He comes flying out of it. I'm like, man, what the heck? And he went right back to it and he was like protecting it. So I'm like, huh. Just maybe you on a bed. I mean he's a two pounder. I just caught him. I don't think he's you know he gonna have to catch them bigger than that. Damn, there's another one. Pretty sure he's on bed too. That's a good. That's probably, that's really close to five. Here's a bit of four and a half. Dang, that's a good one. You can get a thumbnail picture up before you release them. 458. <clears throat> that's the one dreams are made of right there, boys. A little bit of a bloody tail pre spawn, man. Eh? That's 
that's a good feeling right there. And look, we sitting in no water. That fish doing one of two things. I think it was pre-spawn, probably on a bed out here on the main river, on this real hard shell bottom, or she's sitting around eating bluegill. One, one of the two. Solid one, a little over two pounds, two and a quarter, I'm gonna say. Man, it's a lot of time in between bites, man. I don't like that. But sometimes it's gonna be a slow grind. 238. All right, guys. Midday report. It's um, it's pretty, it's pretty tough. I think on Gville right now, man. Uh, at least shallow. I've stuck shallow all day. We've probably had ten or twelve bites so far today. Um, several of them non-scoreable. A couple two-pounders, two and a quarter, and one four and a half, which is a great bite. But you need five, six, seven, eight of those a day. Um. In the, I'd say in a two and a half pound class or better in order to be competitive. So we got our work cut out, man. We got a lot of work to do yet still. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it moving. I'm gonna get back down the lake near where I got those bites. We're up the river right now, flipping grass and, and mats and stuff like that. I really felt like that would be a player, but I'm not really seeing it. So we're gonna get back down the lake and keep, keep trying it and hopefully we run into them. Dude, check this out. Check this out. So that's a lamprey eel, all right? But look where the eel was at on my man's head. My man had a lamprey eel in his dome, sucking the life out of him. Bro, I just did you a mega favor. First, I thought that was my worm. <laughs> These things are disgusting. About a two and a half pounder. All right, we're getting somewhere. Kinda. I think. I've already I caught so I've caught two two and a quarters. This one right here and a four and a half. Kind of all on the on the same pattern. Dang, what did I say this guy was? Uh, I don't know. He's a one eighty. According to Rapala. Rappler don't be lying. He's a thick little sucker though. He has, he, he, there was another one with him that was bigger. So I say it's probably a, I don't know, a two and a half maybe. <clears throat> um, there's some big ones mixed in too. It's, it's, go, it's, it's looking like it's gonna be a deal where you just gotta try to get as many bites as possible 
doing this and then you know mixed in there'll be there'll be some visuals I had to go check on them flipping fish man it was gonna drive me crazy if I didn't but I kind of got back in the vicinity where I got some bites earlier which is about a mile down the river just right down there and what you got is these bluegill spawning on these big open kind of naked bare gravel areas patches in in between the grass and so it's very key to have a good pair of sunglasses and I really need the sun out to fish this effectively because when the sun's out I can see the light spots real good but when that sun goes away it makes it really hard to throw on those light spots and that's where I've been getting a bite so oh, that was a bluegill but uh yeah man feels good to get a few bites that's for sure so strong to be so small man you got something to prove you lucky I'm good at taking hooks out fish Two and a half, two and three quarter. Black and black and belly, black and belly meat. Always try to help them out a little bit with that, so they can, so they can go ahead and eat normal. Two fifty five. Yeah. Long and lean, man. Happy to, I'll be happy to have you there. I take you. I definitely take you. So we trying to we're trying to stick to this pattern. Or not stick to it, expand on it. New area. So this is like the third little zone where you get up shallow on these on these shallower bars um, that have this shell on it. The bluegill, the bluegill are using that to spawn. And so the bass are just got done spawning. Some of them may even still be spawning, a few of them. And so what they're doing is easy meal. It's, it, it's a trip. I've talked about this before, how mother nature works, man. As soon as the bass get done spawning, the shad spawn. As soon as the shad get done spawning or all at the same time with the shad, you got the bluegill spawn. And so a bass, super tired and worn out from the spawn, they don't got to work themselves too hard to get a meal the meal comes to them. And so that's that's pretty cool how Mother Nature works that out. And uh, just paying attention to that kind of stuff can be critical in picking up on a pattern or, or trying to figure out just what the fish are doing. So, you know, it's that time of year, morning, water temps right around 70, you can expect shad to be spawning, generally. Um, and so that's a, that's, a big, that's a big deal. And what do they spawn around? Rocks, they spawn around docks, they spawn around grass. And so you wanna look for that kind of stuff in the morning. And those bass are gonna be right there looking for an easy meal. So I'm thinking that's what's going on. And uh, I'm just gonna to continue to try to expand on this. Hopefully this gets better. There's tons and tons of bluegill around these areas. So these bass ought to wanna a meal or two.
solid. Solid. Solid fish. Two and a half, maybe. Just sticking with my deal, man. Just covering water. I'm not catching many in these areas. Like this area we're in right here, this is like the probably, I don't know, 20th bass I've seen. I throw it there to see if he bite. Two and a half pounder. Three, four of them and a couple four pounders, a couple five pounders. I don't know, that's what that's what that's what we gonna need. That's a chunky one. Huh. Okay. Close to a three pounder. See that? That's what's going on. You got some fry garters and you got spawners in here. Just gotta work on my patience. He came back and got that. Man, we're playing. Hmm? He had it too. <laughs> I really didn't want to catch him, but. Interesting. Yeah, Alright guys, day two practice. I'm at the sandwich making table <laughs> with, with none other than Dave say this is Firehouse Subs Junior. Bro, I see you over here whipping them up, bro. I'm whipping these sandwiches up. Sizzle hooking them up. And meanwhile, you know me, baby. All right, we're talking about these honey mangoes, though. What is that? A cantaloupe? That's him. That's a cantaloupe? That's a honey dude. That's a honey dude? That's a booty dude. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Can you smell them? There's a certain smell to these fruits and these mangoes and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I think it smells good. You like it? No. You don't like it? I hey, don't. well, you know, hey, so. You they, walk into they, a fruit place, it smells like rotten. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, yeah. from the fruit. Fermented. Yeah. So, but but they also, these melons, they got a stinky smell to them. They, they, some of them call musk melons. Yes. Yeah, you stink a little bit. Stink a little bit. Yeah. I'll tell you what you need to do. What do you do, what you do with it? Leave that on the front of your deck today because it's going to be 85 degrees. Oh. Let him ferment Ooh. all day. Oh, and then drink him like wine. And then, and then eat him? No. You ain't going to find your way back Listen, to the boat. Right? You ain't going to find your way back to the house. I'm going to be in the woods. That man's going to be leaning. I'm going to be in the woods Ooh. letting Fermented it go. Fermented cantaloupe drunk. What? <laughs> Facts, bro. All right, we got some work to do though. On a serious note, man. <laughs> DC, wow, bro. Uh, stay to a practice. Yesterday wasn't great, man. You guys saw it. Um, it wasn't terrible. A lot of bites, a lot of small fish. You know, you need three plus pounders here. That's what you need. And so we're gonna have to 
We had to figure out how we can catch three plus pounders, man. Um, only had a couple in that class yesterday. And so today we need an area, a pattern, something we can run multiple areas and just go and get those kind of bites. And so my boy Colin is not gonna be with us today, but I'm rocking the GoPro. So you guys will see whatever goes down on GoPro and I'll talk to you guys about it. But uh, I'm about to make me a fruit sandwich and I'll see y'all in the water. Practice is O V. Hey, Lake Gunner. Lake, Lake Gunner. Lake Lake Gunner. Big G. The, the eelgrass capital of the world. This place has got unbelievable amounts of eelgrass. MDJ made the greatest comment ever about the eelgrass. And DC used it on his show. He said, the eelgrass is undefeated on this pond right undefeated. here. Undefeated. It's like, it's that is like, the greatest comment. There's a list of baits that you want to use that you cannot use. There's like four baits you can throw. Yeah, because the eelgrass going to have you all jammed up. Guaranteed. So, it's OB. It is what it is. But anyway, me and D, me, me and Jade up, DC's fishing today. Adrian's fishing. Adrian's they're, they're fishing. Trying, they're trying to reel a few bass in. Yeah, man. We uh we got out on Nick and Jack a little bit today yeah, on an off day. We did. We a, hey, it's good, time. man. Like, we had a lot. You know, you have a little history there. I've had a little history yeah, there. Yeah, We had a, uh, a pro back shootout there. We did. That's and we funny, got we were, uh, wired to wire, caught one at the very end. That's, that's it, funny. It was funny. So, we, you know, we fished all American, all that stuff. Yeah, man. A lot. Of, I mean, the Tennessee River just... As far as his history goes, but that is a sneakier fishing. place. It is. A lot of people don't know about Lake Nick Jack, and he's yeah. a really good fisher. He is. He is. Yeah, he, like he, he definitely is. He's more like a crossbeam gunner. He's got a lot of river to him, though, too. Yeah, he is. A lot of narrow areas. Run all the way up to downtown Chattanooga. It's real pretty down there. I mean, it's yeah. it's a dope little pond. So what's what's the game plan? Turn so, game plan. I what, mean, you know, I, what I, are you I, gonna be happy? I, with? I committed yeah. shallow. Yep. You know, which is. A little unconventional for me because I like I like to fish out too. I like to fish deep. I love looking for schools, but I just I felt like we're a little early that the bulk of the bass that wasn't the main it wasn't not the, the main only deal. deal you could do. Yeah, but see at the same time I put all my eggs in the shallow basket too, and so I'm there. But there's there, there's so many fish up shallow. You fish shallow for a little bit. A lot. You saw them up, but then there's there's schools too. So. Man, I'm, I'm all in on shallow deal, the bluegill bed deal, and then just bass that are just roaming shallow, mm -hmm. you know. Fishing, still spawners. Up. Still spawners, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fishing holes in the grass. Oh, there's one on bed. You know, you, you catch him. Uh, there's a bluegill bed. You, you throw top water or something over there, catch catch a couple off it. I so mean, tomorrow, what's your, like, goal weight? What's, man, what's I, MBJ's goal weight? I mean, the goal weight is always the, <laughs> not, hey, I want to smash, bro. I want to catch a, a dummy bag. But yeah. what would I be happy with? Honestly, anything over 15 pounds. And I know that sounds like, damn, that's low ball. No. But I, I don't want I want to I want to make sure I keep myself in the game. Yes. Um, but yeah, dub is always the, the goal. Well, the thing but, is if you caught 15 pounds and you had all three pounders, you know, you just didn't get a big bite. Right. Or you lost a big bite. Right. If you had 15 pounds, you know, and you have a five pounder, you weren't hitting on much. Right. You know what I'm saying? So there's a scenario of that, like, you know, it's like, well, the next day, if I catch those four or three pounders and I have to make that five pound bite, I'm in a cut, no problem. Yep. You know, so that's the thing. But anyway, 
I mean, we, we got we got some, we got our work cut out for us overall in this oh, yeah. man. We got to catch some big doubt. ones. This place has got them, man. It this is. place is so healthy right now. It is. Um, but we're gonna find out. You're gonna find out in the next yeah. video. You're gonna find out. Yeah, in the next yeah. Video. You guys are gonna see what goes down. As always, stay tuned. Me and J Dub and the boys, Adrian, DC, we're gonna all lay it all out for y'all. So y'all just keep watching, man. But anyway, this is a practice vlog. I appreciate y'all staying down, checking us out, man. Make sure y'all follow my boy J Dub. And of course you're following me, so I appreciate that. And we'll see y'all in a minute. Game day.